Hello, welcome to my beginner's tutorial on Autodesk Fusion 360. One thing I hear often is that Autodesk Fusion 360 is difficult to learn or has a steep learning curve. I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started in this powerful program. The first thing I'm going to do is make the origin visible. The foundation of working in Autodesk Fusion 360 is sketches. What I'm going to do is start a sketch to make a bottle opener and uh, show you how that's done. To do that, I start with clicking the sketch button, and then I have to choose a plane. I will choose this plane. I've already set in my settings, and I'll show you this now, the orientation. And that is, for me, Z is up because I'm usually doing 3D printing. Right now, you can see that I'm looking down from the top. This little bit over here will show you that. The sketch palette has a lot of different tools that you can use within it. There are constraints which are really useful for making um, different drawings and keeping things dimensioned properly. So to start with this, it's going to be an oblong bottle opener. I'm going to start in the sketch menu and draw a circle. Let's do center diameter. And I'm going to start in the origin and that will be locked to the origin. Now, I happen to have a bottle opener sitting on my desk, and I can measure it, and it looks to be about 28 millimeters across. So I'm going to make this 28 millimeters. There are some really powerful user parameter functions that, will, that can make this easier, but I'm not going to go over the, those right now because I just want to get you started with the basics. I hit enter again, and you can see I've got this, and it's... 28 millimeters across. Now I could add a box to give the oblong shape, but I'm going to use lines. And I can do that if I put the mouse over here and just move upwards, it'll constrain it to that and it'll snap to that point. Now I'm going to make this, oh, 40 looks good. So I'll just make it 40 and hit enter again. And that locks it into place. Now I can hit L as a shortcut to, to draw a line. And let me just escape that. I don't think that snapped where I wanted it to. So I'll do this and this keeps it here. It will snap on that edge. And I'm going to click right there. Now something I can do is I can click the equal constraint and click the line I just made and the line I made previously. Now if I change the dimensions of the previous one to 30, it will change that one. It will keep them the same. That's what's beautiful about constraints. Now I can go ahead and sketch uh, with another circle. It will be a center diameter circle. And since those are there, it just snaps right to them. And you can see that that is the rough outline of my bottle opener. I hit escape to get out of that tool. And you can see that's the only thing that's not fully constrained. Although I think that if I were to hit D, yep, it's just off. Oh, I'm going to enter 28. And just to make absolutely certain. There, it, it's going to warn me because adding this will over constrain the sketch. I don't need it to make everything the same, to make everything fit, but I'm going to go ahead and hit it. Um, I can, it shows it in parentheses to so, show that it's overdriven. I'm zooming in, just using the scroll wheel. You can see these really are tangent and this little symbol shows that they're tangent and they are constrained to tangent. So, what we've got here is this set of shapes. And what I think I'm going to do is leave it at this for now and show you how to turn that into a three dimensional shape. First, we stop the sketch and we can rotate this a little bit to see it. And we're going to take this and turn it into a three dimensional shape by extruding it up here in the create menu. There is an extrude function, which you can get by clicking on that or hitting E. 
Once you do, you get this dialog. You can go and select the parts that you want extruded. You're going to hit escape to get out of the rotation of the orbit tool. And you can just drag that up. I'm actually going to make this two millimeters thick. And 2.5. Let's make it tough. And now you can see that I have a three dimensional shape. Now we need the part of it that actually will function as a bottle opener. The nice thing about this is that you can actually go and edit any of the operations that have happened in history. It's pretty slick. Let me show you what I mean. I will go and double click in the timeline on that sketch. I can also access it in this list. It's hidden it once we've used the extrude, but we can always show it again if we want to do multiple operations with it. I'm going to double click on that. It brings up the sketch again. And you'll see that changes that I make here are reflected in the final object. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create an offset on this first circle. And see, it goes on the outside, but I want it to come inside. And I'm going to have it come in at negative three millimeters. That looks okay, but we need the part that actually does the opening of the bottle. Now the most simple option is to take a single line, find a place that looks nice, and draw it straight down here, and use that. You can see that it actually is touching the line because it snapped to it as we, were, as we uh, started drawing it. Of course, it's not precise because we didn't enter any dimensions or anything. Another thing we could do is we could create a line of a known length, starting up here, coming down here, let me just pull that out, there we are, and so you can see this line is a undefined length. We're going to go ahead and hit D to give it a dimension and we'll make it 10 millimeters. You'll see what I'm doing in just a minute. Give it a dimension of 5 there, which will make that the midpoint. And I can then take this, draw it out to here, and I don't need the length um, as much as I need the angle. We're going to make it 15 degrees. I'm starting with that end point. 15 degrees. Now this seems like an awful lot of work, but all I'm trying to do is build this little piece here. You'll see why it's going to be, that's gonna be the little thing that clips under the bottle cap to lift it off on the bottle opener. So now I'm going to stop the sketch. You can see none of that had much of an effect yet, but that's because we haven't gone in to change the extrude operation to not include this piece. And I'm going to rotate so it's easier to see. That, that, and that. So now you can see that this looks roughly like a bottle opener already. Now in order to make this sharper, like an actual bottle opener, I'm going to go to modify and add a chamfer. So I'll go ahead and do two distances and I will select the two items. And right now I'm going to make this one millimeter. You can see that it's even. Now I don't know which one is which, so I'm gonna make this 1.5. Yeah, that's the one that I don't, that's the one I want to be one. And this I'll make 1.5. You can see that it's a sharper angle. Ah, or you could, it's doing the two in opposite directions. So I'll do it in two operations. That's going to be chamfer. This one, two distances. Huh, 
got rid of an M. Can't do it in 1.5 millimeters. Those are backwards. So I'm gonna do this 1.5 millimeters and this one millimeter. And now you can see that it's a little sharper angle. And I can actually make this 1.75 and this should be 1.25. And let's make it 1.2 so it's not perfectly sharp on that edge. And now I will go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. You can do fillets also if you wanna curve those. Um, this was 1.2 and the other one is 1.75. I think 1.1 1 .1 is good enough. Yeah, and I'm going to go and I can go back and edit that one in the timeline. Make that 1.1 millimeters. So now you can see that we've got that tapering in a bit to be a sharper edge for the bottle opener. Now while that might be okay, I think it might work better to have one of those sharper than the other. I'm actually gonna come and change this one to 0 0.9 millimeters and two millimeters. There we are, 2.5. And the other one, I don't like that. I'm gonna go half a millimeter. Yeah, so it only tapers down a little bit. And this other one, right here, double click, have this go back. 2.5 I think it was. Let me just check that, see if that looks reasonable to me. Yeah, it looks about the same. And I'm gonna make this distance 1.75. Mm, too sharp. And now you can see that it's tapered more in one direction than the other. Now, if you wanted to can you continue editing this, you might say, well, how do you add features? Here's what we're gonna do. We hit sketch and now we can choose a surface. In this case, it's this top surface. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add another circle, which I can do with C. Now this is showing the center of the previous circle. I'm going to use that and it was 28. So I'm going to do 24 and I'm going to add another circle that's concentric and that's going to be uh, 21 so there's one and a half millimeters between each of those and now the crazy part I'm going to add some text and that is as simple as sketch text takes a moment has to load my fonts this gives me a chance to put the text here and my last name begins with an H, so I'm going to use an H. Most of these fonts aren't going to work properly because they're not the right style of font. I'm going to check and see if any of them will. I'll use Apple Chancery, I'm pretty sure that one works. Yeah. I'm going to take this and I'm gonna use this to rotate it 90 degrees. I will move this so it's centered there and I can increase the height. And I'll move that so it looks fairly well centered. There we are, and okay. And that puts my text there and I will stop the sketch so that I can work with it. Now I'm going to extrude, grab that ring, and I'll grab the text and I'm going to bring that up half a millimeter. You see that this moved from new body to join. That means it's going to add everything together. I'll say okay, and now you can see that I've got this bottle opener. If I were to print that out or fabricate that out of metal, I'd have a neat little bottle opener with my initial on it. I hope this has helped get over some of the bumps in trying to get used to Autodesk Fusion 360 and give you a little confidence in designing in it. This was really just a couple sketches and some extrudes and some chamfers. And you know, you can do a lot of really advanced and complicated stuff with combinations of these functions. I'm gonna let it go at that after I hide the origin so this is a cleaner view. I hope that's given you some inspiration and I look forward to seeing you again next time. 
If you like this video, click in the upper right to subscribe or in the upper left to watch the rest in this series. In the bottom left, you'll see a video that YouTube is recommending for you.